So, how many of you all here love horror movies? Or mo oh wow, the movies which can exactly give you out the perfect airy, creepy atmosphere, right? We all love that. So, here I am to tell you a, a short story. This story is about a beautiful Hungarian noblewoman from an aristocratic family. So once upon a time, when the morning was cold enough to freeze, she craved wine. And waiting at her table, breakfast going cold and gown crushed by her chair. The maid tried, tries to pour in her glass, but she slipped and stained her gown red. Anger blinds her and out of rage, she slapped her maid, whose blood splashed on her skin. But her face glimmed with joy when she found out that that very blood made her skin glow, look younger, almost like it rejuvenated. There, there goes the story of cruelty, gore, and blood, which can even give you the nightmares. Her hunger and craving for eternal beauty and youth blinded her with a supposed cure, that is, blood of young virgin women. Yes. Belonging from a wealthy, prominent family with powerful associates and relatives, she used to send her uh, servants and guards to abduct girls from nearby villages. Seemingly, she targeted poor girls and at times lures them to the castle, promising them work. She even asked her husband to build a ghastly torture chamber where girls as young as 10 were beaten severely and mutilated before freezing or starving to death. Some girls were allegedly burned with hot tongs. Others had their face parts bitten off. Murdering young girls drank their blood and soaked herself and applied all the blood to every part of her body and inches of her skin. To retain her beauty and youth is what she became obsessed about. She killed more than 300 young girls brutally and in ways you couldn't even think of. But she was captured after an investigation by a palatine named Terzo. Given her social status, it was decided that a public execution would have been too scandalous. So instead, she was put to house arrest. She remained in the castle of Sejte for the rest of her life and died in her sleep at the age of 44. This very woman has inspired films, plays, operas, television shows and even video games. She is referenced in DC comic, the Vampire Hunter D manga, American Horror Story, the Tekken games and many metal songs like the one you are about to listen. She is one of the very influential and prominent inspiration for the famous novel, Dracula. Yes, vampire stories and the concept of drinking human blood seems actually true when it comes to her, now that we have learned about her. She is not the theme of Halloween, she is Halloween herself. She is the living ghost in the present day, even if she is dead centuries ago. But the fun fact is, Vampires, they don't die and they live through eternity, right? Also, is it too late to give the disclaimer now that the above story is not just a story but a real incident, which means that it's all the history for all the horror and creepy fictional stuff we face today and see this day. Even her own life have been produced in a movie of her own name. She is the woman of dark desires, the blood countess, the female Dracula. She holds the dubious honor of being the most prolific female murderer in history, as dictated by Guinness World Records. She is no other than Elizabeth Bittori.
perfectly reflects the story I've said. So, it, but it would be unfair. Sorry, this song that you have listened to is a Swedish extreme metal band named Petori, and it has been featured in their song "Women of Dark Desires," which could be found in their album under the sign of the black mark. So, it would be unfair if we do not flip the coin and look to the other perspective. We have only considered her evil side till yet, but. What if she was actually innocent? Modern historians have claimed that these stories originated from the widespread disbelief that women were not capable of violence for its own sake. Several historians have argued that far from being just a cruel and barbaric killer, Betori was in fact merely a victim of a conspiracy. The Hungarian professor Laszlo Nagy claimed the accusations and proceedings against Betari were politically motivated and due to her extensive wealth and ownership of large lands in Hungary. Thurzo was immediately benefited from her debt because he was the one who got what he wanted, her fortune, her property, her wealth. There's a saying going like, if you want to know who's behind a crime, follow the money. So it was not uncommon to accuse a wealthy widow of murder, witchcraft, sexual misconduct to seize her lands. This story echoed the circumstances of several witchcraft related cases. The witchcraft craze and relevance to Salem witchcraft killing thousands of support, supposed witches that rippled in the story. The way I see it about her, her rivals found a way to bring her down, a woman of political power, influence and great fortune. So what's a better way to do than that to demonize her? So this is not the first history example in history, and I fear it's not the last one either. So the next time you hear this song, you'll be reminded of her, the female vampire of history and the women of dark desires. Thank you.